that was excellent. My only criticism would be probably you should do the direction first, because that's the thing that people would tend to forget. The first thing we do is write down the direction and say, aha, this is going to be positive. Okay. And then we can figure out from this what the magnitude is going to be. Okay. And like last semester, if something is positive, it's good to still put the positive sign in front of it, just to force yourself to think about that. Yeah. OK, well, to save time, we won't do the calculations, but that would be the, uh, the procedure then for figuring out the electric field okay. um, at this point. Um, but of course, the there's electric fields at every point around here. You can figure out the electric field here, or here, or here, or here, whatever electric fields they ask you for. The electric field exists at every point in space. Notice that you did not need to know anything about the test charge. The test charge does not determine how big the electric field is. Suppose that I now put a positive 3 Coulomb test charge here. Oh. A, uh, positive 3 microcoulomb test charge. How does that affect the electric field here? Well, it doesn't affect the electric field at all. At least it doesn't affect the electric field from here. Yeah. Right. Um, it might create its own electric field. But um, even then, it doesn't create an electric field at the same exact point that it's at. That's an important point. Um, a point, so there, there is no electric field right at the point yeah. where something is uh, existing. Okay. That's kind of a philosophical point. <laughs> But again, the field depends on the source charge, not the test charge. Changing the test charge doesn't change the field. In fact, there could be a field even if there's no test charge there, because the field is just a property of the point in space. Now let's say we wanted to find the net electric field at this point. How could we find the net electric field at this point from these two charges? Um, we could probably add the electric field to each. Right, making sure to get the right signs. Yeah. Just for practice, what would be the direction? So we know that the uh, electric field from charge one is going to be pointing to the right. Mm -hmm. What would be the direction of the electric field from charge two um, at this point? It's also pointing to the right. Yes, because this is negative, which means that the field should be towards the source charge, which would be to the right. So these would both have the same sign, probably both positive. So this would remind you of what we did with the electric forces earlier. We can use the superposition principle again. We can find the electric field separately, and then we just add them together just being careful to get the signs correct. And again, for this problem, we would never use the right-hand side of the flowchart. This problem is just about the left-hand side of the flowchart, figuring out the field from the source charge. These are both being considered source charges because they're both the source of this field. How can we figure out the net field at this point from these two charges? force here, because I haven't told you how big the charge is here. Right. In fact, for all we know, there might be no charge here. So we can't figure out a force, but we can still figure out the field. So I guess we could find the two separate electric fields. Mm -hmm. Finding the R, R distance. Right. If I gave you the distances, I would have to yeah. give you the distances, of course. Yeah. So a good thing to do first here is to say, what would be the direction of the field from charge one? Yeah. So 
what would be the direction of the field from charge one at this point? Towards or away from Q1? Oh, sorry, away. Since we have a positive charge, so it would look like this. It would be along the same line. It would look like this. For a positive source charge, the field points away from that source charge. And then what would the field look like at this point from charge two? It would be pointing charge, towards charge two. Because here we have a negative source charge. And for a negative source charge, the field is pointing towards the source charge. One thing that it looks like you've already decided is that we're treating both of these as source charges. So that's a good step. Because we want to know the field from the source charge. We're not dealing with this high part of the, the uh, flow chart. All right. Well, the key thing is I just want to show that this is going to be very analogous to the problems that we did with electric force. Mm -hmm. First, we draw the two individual fields. Um, then we have to find the two fields individually. How can I find the magnitude of this field? I can use this formula to find its magnitude. Yeah. How can I find the magnitude of this field? I can use this formula to find its magnitude. Then what do I do when I know the two individual fields? Um, to find the net field. Can you break them up into their components? Yeah. The key thing is we can't just add these directly, because they're not parallel or anti-parallel to each other. How do we combine vectors that are not parallel or anti-parallel break them into components. And how would you break them into components? Using the triangle method, very similar to what we saw before. Yeah. For this, we would draw a field triangle and a distance triangle. And then for this, we would draw a field triangle and a distance triangle. You would use that to break them into components. Then we can add the components together, yeah. um, being very careful to get the signs right on the components. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would know the components of the net field. And then if necessary, we could draw one final triangle to figure out the overall net field and the angle that it's making. So it would be pretty much an exact analogy with the two-dimensional force problems that we did before. So the bad news is we won't have time to do a full problem like this. But the good news is that it's very analogous to the two-dimensional force problems uh, that we did before, which is why we spend a lot of time on that, because you need that for both force and field. Uh, and again, you would never even use this part of the flow chart for this problem, because we're just trying to figure out the field from the source charges so far. Uh, okay, so just like with forces, first figure out the individual fields and then break them into components using the triangles method, then add the components together, and then if necessary, you might need one more triangle to figure out the overall field and the angle that it's making. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that doesn't cover all the different types of problem, problems in your homework, but it covers a lot of them. A lot of the problems in your homework are like this, where they're giving you a bunch of charges and you have to figure out the net force or the net field. And this is the part of the homework that um, is going to be on the test, like I said. Okay. Um, the other parts of the homework um, are actually very unlikely to be on the test. Okay. Um, this is what you're going to be seeing, trying to figure out net force and net field. Okay. And we try to give you a little bit more intuition for what the electric field means by focusing on the units. It's kind of like the price. Yeah. Just like you could talk about the price of apples, this is like the price of coulombs and newtons, almost. Um, it tells you how many newtons of force you get for each coulomb of charge that you're putting at a point uh, in space. So you can think of the electric field. The electric field tells you what the force would be on a one coulomb charge. That would be a good thing to have in your notes. The electric field tells you what the force would be on a one coulomb charge, but that makes it very easy to figure out what the force is on a two coulomb charge or a three coulomb charge. Just like the price of apples tells you what, how much it would cost to buy one apple, which makes it very easy to figure out how much it would cost to buy two apples or three apples. But it's just hypothetical. Just like you might not buy any apples, you might not actually put a test charge at a point in space. Uh, one more thing, I find that people often confuse these two formulas because they look so similar. So make sure you don't confuse these two formulas. They look similar, but this is the one for force and this is the one for field. Okay. Uh, like I said, I would recopy this flow chart onto a separate piece of paper because you want to you want to kind of want to keep coming back to it and uh, using it on problems as the, the course goes on. Okay. okay. Thank you. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.